Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tim Gibson, and I am privileged to serve as the president of the King's College, New York City. And over the, uh, over the course of my career, one of the things that I've enjoyed the most, both in the Air Force and at King's, is just the process of learning and learning from a different perspective, uh, learning from uh, a different discipline. And in fact, uh, over the last several weeks at King's, we've had the opportunity to do exactly that. It's one of the things I enjoy most about the King's College. Not only do we have a mission that is focused on our students and preparing them to lead, but, re but we also have a mission in which we expect faculty members to be uh, actively engaged in their craft and in the public sphere. And over the last several weeks, we've had a series of virtual conferences in which we have looked at epidemics and uh, the impacts throughout history and a little bit about the impacts today and going forward. And so in that theme, uh, today, we're going to go a little bit deeper on what might be next and in a particular disciplinary field, and that is uh, the area of business. So joining us today is Professor Don Fotopoulos. And Don has been at King since 2004. Don holds a, a degree from uh, Cornell University and an MBA for the, from the NYU uh, Stern School of Business. Uh, she is a multi-talented and uh, multi-faceted uh, achiever on, on many ways. Not only is she one of the most uh, popular and beloved faculty members in the classroom, she is herself a CEO. Uh, her, uh, her company, Hidden Profit Academy, has a mission of um, increasing the survival rate of small businesses by 50%, and that is... That's a, ch a very challenging goal. It's, it's aspirational and I love it. Uh, and Don is the, the, the perfect person to lead that organization. She's written a book called uh, Accounting for the Number Phobic, which you'll hear more about as we go through uh, today's presentation. But in 2019, her book was awarded uh, the, uh, the accolade of one of the best accounting books of all time, not of the year, of all time. Uh, and so it's really a privilege for me to, uh, to invite Dawn to address the issue of what businesses, small businesses specifically, can be thinking about, should be thinking about right now today uh, with the events of COVID-19 unfolding the way they have and what is the, the most important elements of things that they could be doing today to come out the other side of this thing really successfully and in fact uh, potentially even in a, in a little bit better circumstance than, uh, than what they are. So Don, uh, so much appreciate uh, what you do and what you invest uh, in our classrooms, in our, in our students, in our conversations, and uh, just really looking forward to, uh, to what you've got to share with us today. So let me just turn it over to you and I'll come back later with uh, the questions as folks uh, bring them up. In fact, forgive me for just a moment. Um, this is a, an interactive uh, opportunity. So if you have questions that you would like Professor Fotopoulos to address, um, I'm gonna invite you to text them to the following number. The number is 646-355-8946. So text your, your questions into that number and then we'll get those in, in, to, uh, in front of Don and uh, allow her to tackle them as, uh, as the event unfolds. And so with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Professor Fotopoulos. Well, President Gibson, thank you very much for that, uh, for that wonderful uh, introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just a thrill to be with you. And, uh, I, and everything we're going to talk about today is really designed to equip you. That's really what we are at the King's College, is we're equippers, we're sword makers. And the idea here is we can't fight the battle for you, but what we can do is we can give you the armor, we can give you the equipment that you need to go on the battlefield to prevail. And that's really how we feel about our students and on hopefully uh, what we're gonna do, at least partially so, in today's presentation. So without further ado, I'd like to share my screen so we can take you through the online marketing makeover and uh, one of the things that you, we will discover in a minute is how woefully behind the curve small businesses are. Now, I have been in the trenches 
uh, equipping small business owners and frankly releasing them from the from the um, from the conundrum that they were in long before the virus ever hit, and that is just the uh, flying blind, driving their businesses with their eyes closed because they couldn't read their financial statements. They didn't think it was important. And so the whole idea of the book, which by the way is a funny book on accounting. It's the only book that on accounting that will make you laugh. It's illustrated by a Disney artist and it is designed to break through fear and intimidation because there is really nothing that will hold us back more than those two things. And so right now, we break any fear and intimidation about this particular topic, online marketing, and we're going to take you through step by step just some very small, inexpensive things that you can do and maybe even some no cost things that you can do tomorrow, next week, to begin to move your business in the right direction online. So just bear with me one second. Here we go. Okay, so we're, it's really pretty straightforward. We're going to talk about some of the challenges which I think are gonna surprise you. Some of this you probably know. And by the way, some of what I'm gonna share with you, I have also learned the hard way. The Hidden Profit Academy is an accredited learning management platform for, con uh, for continuing education credits for CPAs. It's nationally accredited, and we have the best and the brightest teaching on all kinds of topics so that our CPAs can basically be the point of leverage. We're raising up an army that we can train to basically be small business consultants because they have the oversight, they have the trust relationship. And uh, we've been doing that slowly, slowly. And we're finding that with our methodology that these businesses are turning around at record speed. But the point of online marketing is really, um, we are not mapping an old business model onto a new tech platform. What we have to do is we have to completely rethink our business model. So we'll talk about the challenges and frankly, some of the mistakes I've made. And if I had to turn the clock back, what I'd do differently. And then some opportunities and believe it or not, they are there. And then next steps, some very practical things that you can that you can do. Now, who is Don Fotopoulos? That's the phonetic pronunciation of my Greek last name. And my last name actually means something. Poulos, P-U-L-O-S, actually means son of, and photo, as in photograph, it's just not spelled correctly in the English, uh, is means son of light, and, and isn't that great? So I'm a teacher, and I can provide some enlightenment. The three courses that I teach at the King's College, I teach principles of management and organization. I teach introduction to marketing, and there's gonna be a lift out of some of the things we talk about marketing in this presentation. And our students, of course, are getting this as well. And then business strategy management, we don't teach them how to think. We don't teach them uh, uh, the answers. We teach them how to think, rather and uh, how to create an organization where the longer it exists, the stronger it becomes, and the more people inside that organization flourish. That's our job, is to create engines of human flourishing. That's, that is our orientation at the King's College, and we believe business, like anything else, can be used for good or used for evil. And so we start with John 1.15, that Jesus is full of truth and grace, and, uh, and we use that as our springboard for the 27 Harvard Business School case studies that we go through in that class. Introduction to marketing is the next step after you understand the operating framework in management. Marketing initiates the business cycle and marketing aims the gun. If you don't get marketing right, you waste a ton of money in sales efforts that are ineffective. So marketing and sales are not the same. Marketing aims the gun, sales pulls the trigger. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that and I'll, I'll give you a framework from Kotler. I'll speak to it actually. And then in business strategy, our students run $40 million businesses through a simulation and they're CEOs and the company that they're running is a tech company and it is a publicly traded company and they have about 350 decisions they have to make and we run that, they run their businesses for uh, 13 weeks. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna just, um, I'm gonna brag on them for a minute because uh, we won one of the top six 
slots, seven years running in the CAPSIM World Finals. CAPSIM is the simulation. And uh, for two years in a row, we were number one in the world. This year, we were number five in the world. And I think that's pretty amazing. And uh, our students know more than their graduate counterparts because their bosses call me and tell me this. <laughs> so I'm very proud of them. Uh, accounting for the number phobic is not a book, it's an intervention. Because after training thousands and thousands of small business owners through webinars, FedEx actually is a sponsor of some of the work that I do. Uh, and you can find some of my webinars, by the way, on score.org. And if you go into the search bar and search on my name, you'll find all the pre-recorded webinars. And they're evergreen and they're no cost to you. But at any rate, um, I believe that small business businesses are the engine of innovation. They are the job creators in this country and God help us if we don't help them. So we're really thrilled that you're here. And uh, yes, I am a recovering banker. I was vice president for Citigroup. I ran p ls anywhere from 100 to about 150 million in size while I was there. And I ended up learning about turnarounds because when I was there in the 90s, um, prior to my joining Kings, city was in very tough shape financially and so i learned these lessons the hard way and you can learn them now by um by just simply being on this webinar so we're thrilled you're here so i have a question for everybody on the call ha when was the last time you googled your brand online you either put in your name or you put in the name of your company or you put in the name of a product that you sell or a service that you sell i encourage you to do this on a on a regular basis you need to see number one where you end up in search in organic search because you need to look at the world from your potential customers perspective i want you to pay attention also to the keywords that show up on google because google will provide those keywords at the very bottom of the search page and you'll see recommendations for search in conjunction with your brand or your service. And uh, that's how people find you. So what I want to do is I want to flip your vision 180 degrees and look at everything from your prospects viewpoint. So um, did you know, for example, that 46% of businesses don't even have a website? In the year 2020, I think this is an unbelievably outrageously high number. I was shocked when I was doing the research to find out that this is true. Almost half of small businesses do not have even a website. They don't have an online presence. So you need to understand that if your online presence is A, non-existent, or B, really sub-optimized, it's almost impossible to get a perfectly optimized web presence. And we'll talk a little bit about some basic things that you can do to really help you. But if you are not for real committed to an online presence, you are leaving at least 30 to 40% of potential revenues on the table. And in this new world that's post virus and it's coming, you don't exist. So it's super important. This is not just a nice topic. This is survival for us. So what have I seen? I'm, I've also been a consultant for 25 years. I see a lot of fragmented online presence. It's very confusing. And let me tell you what happens. Well, first of all, <clears throat> when people come to your online assets, regardless whether it is a social media platform or it's a video that you've posted or it's a testimonial that you've posted, if there is confusion, potential customers or just viewers will fill that gap in confusion with negative assumptions because that's human nature. You will not get the benefit of the doubt. So you, you, we, we as business owners have to make it so clear and so crisp and so you get it in two seconds because that's all the time you have online or they will nuke you, you will lose credibility and it will be a hundred times more expensive and difficult to gain the credibility back. So a fragmented online presence is not just a problem. It can be lethal to your brand. Okay, no optimization. Optimization is expensive. It takes a long time. It's the long, it's the long game. 
but there are key words. There are ways, they're magnets basically. A key word is the way people will find you. And, and all of us do the same thing and think about it, right? If, we're, if we have a need, we have a problem we're trying to solve and we go online to do a search, there are certain terms that we'll use to try to bubble up the relevant resources that we need. Well, your prospective clients are doing the same thing. So optimization is important. It's expensive. And again, it's the long game. You don't have to be fully optimized, but you need to be mindful that if you have anything that is written online, it needs to, it needs to be um, optimized enough so that it's easy for people to find you. The other thing that I found is that there is inconsistency in messaging across platforms. So if we see ABC company over here on Facebook, it looks completely different ABC company on LinkedIn, which is not okay. And um, the other thing that is absolutely rife is stale content, irrelevant content, broken links, um, and frankly, mea culpa, right? I have 500 articles on dawnphotopolis.com, which is really just a placeholder for my speaking and for the consulting work that I do. But it's really interesting to me that I'm not the only one that has this problem. It's a, it's a time drain for me to go through it, but I know I have broken links there and I've got to go through it. And what happens is if you have broken links, in other words, links to things that no longer exist. So you don't control that, but you can control whether or not the link is present in your article or in your blog post. Um, uh, we need to clean up our stale data and content. It has to be mission critical. And then there is a bit of a learning curve you don't have to do everything at once. You don't have to do everything optimi uh, optimized. It doesn't have to be optimized, but we do have to be mindful of some of these things because it is a complete turnoff to people who really need what you have to offer. The other thing that I have found is that there's very slow adaptation to new technology. And again, mea culpa, right? When Instagram came out and became very big, what, six, seven years ago, I couldn't stand the platform. I couldn't stand it because it was just one more, it felt like just one more time drain. I didn't understand how people were using it, what kind of people were using it. And it, I, it also struck terror in my heart that I could be just pouring all my time and energy into a platform that within 24 hours, my, my post or my, you know, my, um, my outbound communication was like gone. But a lot of that has changed. And um, by new technology, I, I want to focus on mobile technology, which is where the world is. It's not going there anymore. That's where it is. And everything we do, we have to be mindful that it is mobile where we need to live and where we need to be credible. So a slow adaptation to new social platforms. I want to talk a little bit in a minute about something called social media arbitrage. And that's actually something I learned about fairly recently, but it could be very, very powerful. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So the key is here to make it easy, make it convenient, make it easy, make it easy for your potential audience to find you, make it easy for collaborators to find you. Because it isn't just about building your audience. It's about building credibility in your ecosystem. Now, all of you, absolutely all of you, have credibility in the real world. You absolutely do. I know you do. I've spoken to so many of you. Um, how do we map that now in an online environment? That's the key. So make it easy for people to find you, to find your brand, um, to find your reputation, because that's what a brand really is. And what is that brand? The brand is a promise and they need to understand not just who you are, but understand how you're different than your competitors. And that's important because at the end of all of our effort, we need to answer a very important diagnostic question. Why should anybody listen to you over anybody else about a particular topic or problem? Why should anybody purchase from you instead of anybody else for a particular problem? So at any rate, really important that your visitors understand what you are selling and make it easy to buy from you, case in point. So I love to garden. 
And there's a wonderful course. It's $37. And I think it's the cheapest date in the world. My tomatoes always die. My cucumbers always die. And I know there's somebody out there smarter than me that knows how to grow tomatoes and cucumbers. So I went to buy this course. Now, I am in New York, but I want the, um, the course sent to and the book sent to my summer home. So my credit card is attached. My billing address is attached to my home in New York. And my mailing address is, uh, is at my summer home. So when I was trying to purchase this, I couldn't do it. It kept saying that there were errors. And I know, the, the, I know my credit is fine. So I reached out to these guys and I said, I don't understand. You know, I need it sent to my summer home. And they said, well, please make sure that your billing and your shipping address is the same. And I said, well, that doesn't work for me. For these reasons, I'm not spending most of my time in New York until New York opens back up again. And I still haven't heard from them. That's four days. I'm ready to buy. I'm ready to ring the cash register and I can't do it. They're making it really hard for me. So here's my recommendation to you. If you have the capability of ordering or of somebody ordering from you online, Shopify is a really good platform. It's fully integrated. Stripe, it has full Stripe integrations. It's if you have anybody who is worth their salt for a very small amount of money, you can put uh, you can put up a, um, a purchasing engine on your website and they could purchase anything. They could even purchase time and expertise from you, but make it easy for them to buy from you. Okay. I'm still in dialogue with these guys and my tomatoes are suffering in the process. Okay. Easy is more important than optimal. Remember this. So better that you're not trying to solve all the problems at the same time, make it easy. And if you're not sure if it, if it's easy, find your children or your grandchildren or a neighbor and find somebody that's about 10 to 15 years old and have them test it because those are the people that actually are the most tech savvy and they will tell you, boy, you know, this really doesn't work. Actually, we have some King students who could do this as well. Uh, this doesn't work and here are the five reasons why. Really super important, again, that we are, um, that we are focused on mobile technology. Yes, laptops exist. Yes, um, iPads exist, but it is mobile that is primary. Something like 60 to 70% of purchases now happen through a mobile device. And so that should tell us everything we need. Okay, let's talk about opportunities. When I was writing the book, Accounting for the Number Phobic, which is a survival guide for small business owners, that's the value proposition, Harper Collins and I had a long conversation. That's my publisher. And I said, you know, I don't want to just teach something. I am in the aha moment business. I'm not a teacher. I'm in the revelation business. And there's a difference between education and revelation. Okay. Education is where a professor or a teacher is on a call or standing in front of a classroom and talking about a bunch of stuff. And everybody in the audience shakes their heads like bobblehead dolls and they go, yeah, 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 we get it, we get it. And nothing changes in their lives. Revelation is very different. Revelation is when there is, a, when there is the marriage of knowledge and wisdom. And wisdom is how you apply that knowledge. And when the wisdom is present, I can tell you the moment when the student's eyes get big, their jaw hangs slack, the light bulb, the proverbial light bulb goes up over their heads. And then I know we've just given sight to blind people and they will never look at the world the same way again. We are in the revelation business. You and I are in the revelation business. The King's College is in the revelation business, right? And it's something very interesting that um, when somebody who has gained sight miraculously, or through surgery, there's something very interesting. They never choose to close their eyes again. Have you ever noticed that? So when I, I, spoke, uh, when I spoke to Norm Brodsky, who's a very successful entrepreneur, he was my interview for chapter 10 for number phobic. And he had me stand up and he said, I want you to lift up your right shoe. And I thought this was very odd, <laughs> but I said, well, this is a smart man, okay. So I lifted up my right shoe. He said, there's a million dollars under your shoe. And I was surprised. He said, oh yeah, there is. 
And there's a million dollars under every single small business owner's shoes and they can't see it. So let's talk about where some of that might be hiding. The first thing you need to know is that your audience is desperate for you to show up online. They are desperate for you to show up online. Okay, and when you are online, you're available 24 seven, even when you're sleeping. And this is the key. Your brand is working for you. The business is working as hard for you as you're working for it online if you do it right. And the one thing you have to remember, okay, is that your competitors are praying that you don't get your act together online because that makes it that much harder for them to compete with you. So <clears throat> the opportunity is that you have the chance it's not just your brand, but it is your heart that you are presenting online. The beauty of video, for example, which is where most content is going right now, and it's going there for a variety of reasons. A, most people hate to read, which is crazy, but it's true. I don't know if you know this, but 95% of people who buy books don't get past chapter one, which is like crazy. But once I learned that, I said, well, I guess I have to turn the book into a video course, which I did and which makes it a lot easier to, uh, to consume. But um, video is important because your personality is unique in the history of mankind, right? And your heart can come through in a video in a way that that a static two-dimensional written article will be useful, but it's not the same. Your personality comes through. So at any rate, let's get our act together online. So I wanna, I wanna take you through a process that most small business owners do not do, and it's absolutely radioactive and golden if you get this right. First of all, when you go online, the most important thing is that you don't promote yourself. I mean, that sounds a little counterintuitive, right? You would think, well, it's all about me. It's all about my brand. It's all about my company. Uh, no. No, because authenticity is, is the currency online. And authenticity is about you being an advocate for your customers. We are an advocate for our students. We are an advocate, we, the King's College, we are an advocate for their parents who are investing in their children's education. We're an advocate for the companies that hire our students because they are blessed because our students are ready and prepared to contribute from day one once they're hired, right? So you are an advocate for your, for your customers and you're gonna, you're gonna communicate that by telling stories and stories are case studies, they're mini case studies. And what does that look like? You're gonna talk about the situation, you're gonna talk, and that's like two or three sentences long, no more than that. Then you're gonna talk about <clears throat> what, um, what you did in order to bless that, that person, that company. And then you're gonna talk about the results. What was the problem? What did you do? What were the results? What was the problem? What did you do? What was the results? And you're the guide. You're the, you're the, um, the expert. You're the one that made the difference. You were the one that was in the mix. And as you tell these stories, it's like looking at the painting of the Mona Lisa. You know, as you look at it more carefully, you start to see more details and everybody's gonna start to see themselves in these stories. I have a thousand stories. And when I talk about them from a main stage or when I talk about them in the classroom or in a webinar like this, everybody says, oh my gosh, that's me. I need more from this woman. Not because I'm the expert in everything, I'm not. But because they recognize I've been down this journey, I can look back and help them and prevent them from making the same mistakes that I've made. So you're the guide, you know the path, and what the testimonials and the outcomes do, the outcomes are important. The outcomes is your evidence. It's the proof that it's not just, I know what I'm doing and I do a great job. You communicate those things without having to say them. And if, if it's possible, okay, to get a testimonial from your client in video format or in written format, that's absolute gold. So, um, Remember 
that you have the opportunity to speak to groups, to speak to collaborators, trade associations. What do we know? Online, most of these trade associations are also late to the party. A lot of your collaborators are going to be people that have built their reputations and their followings online. You can piggyback on their audience, but you can bless their audience with the knowledge that you have and with the stories you can tell. But the stories become your anchor. That's your platform. Okay, so what does this really look like? The process is just, I call it the three Ps. Don Fotopoulos is three Ps, right? You publish, and it could be video or uh, written content. And it's short and sweet. It's a 300 word blog post. It's a minute and a half video. It's a minute video. It's one idea, one thought, one story. And it doesn't have to be high, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, high um, uh, production quality. Okay, you're not on television. You're telling it like it is. You publish something. You promote it and then you prosper. So this process starts here. The first thing you have to do is build your network. In other words, build your audience. And there are lots of different ways to do that. But the easiest way to do that, frankly, and we do this with our students in Intro to Marketing, is you reach out first to the marketplace and you begin to follow people that are in your ecosystem and people that have big followings and people that are big influencers. Just start there. In most cases, a third to a half of them will follow you back if you have a real online presence because they will check you out before they follow you back. So first thing, build your network because you don't want to start promoting to you know three people, your family members and your neighbors. So build your network, then you're going to create content and you're going to create content based on the questions and the problems you have solved, right? So there's a guy who was a roofer and he fell off a roof and broke his back. It was a terrible story, but he's a very good roofer and he's very knowledgeable. So he got in front of his laptop and he said, you know, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, people make a lot of mistakes when it comes to, to hiring a roofer. And let me give you some ideas on how to hire the best roofer for your job. Let me talk to you about a sunroof or solar panels. Let me talk to you about slate roofs versus whatever roofs. So he just would go in front of the camera and talk about one topic. And he did this pretty regularly, like once a week, couple of times a month. He did this for about a year. He has a million followers right now. He's so incredibly credible. And because he has so many followers, he's generating ad money on YouTube. And all he has to do is show up. So create content around the questions or problems that you're solving. And then let everybody in your network know that it's there. And you always invite using questions. So, and also outbound questions. What else would you like to know about? What else is important to you? What else is really uh, nagging at you? What keeps you up at night? You've heard those questions, but ask them and you'll be amazed at what shows up. And the value that you're offering is knowledge and wisdom. Remember revelation? That's what you're offering is not just knowledge, it's revelation. And continue to build your list and the list are the people that want more from you and so they will give you their contact information that's really pay dirt because you need to control i don't mean control in a bad way but you need to have your audience you need to know who they are and be able to reach back out to them so building your list is ultimately what you want to do because then you can go back out to them you can offer courses you can offer special deals you can offer services and so on because you now have a relationship and credibility with them. So at any rate, this is sort of the money slide. This will be available to you in PDF format after we're done. So again, one of the things we do in Introduction to Marketing is, and the second half of the course, it's actually two courses in one. We do all the theory in the first half of the course, which is all the Harvard Business School case studies. It's Philip Kotler's 5Cs framework, all sorts of stuff. And, um, and if you're interested in learning more about that, please let me know. But at any rate, uh, the second half of the course, students start from a dead stop. They open up a, um, they open up a blog, start publishing, and they only publish 12 articles, which are like 300, 400 words each, and they do videos and whatever around that over the, the last six weeks, seven weeks of the course. 
So they start from a dead stop. And I, and if they can get something up and running in that short period of time, then this is really easy for you because you have depth of wisdom and experience and background and stories that they frankly don't even have. So first thing we do is we build the network. First thing you're going to do is quantify your current reach because it's going to be bigger than you think it is. And it's very encouraging to do this. So whether it's you or it's people in your System that have big followings, I want you to laundry list and take and do an accounting like an audit of everybody you could reach. If you had to reach absolutely everybody that you could today, where would you find them, right? How could you connect to them on, on the social media platforms, in the real world, and so on? And so in our ecosystems and Kings alone, we can reach roughly 5,000 people between uh, 5,000, maybe even 10,000 with the Briarcliff Manor Kings alums, there are several thousand in that ecosystem, several thousand in our current, you know, Kings alums, uh, in the house system, in, um, uh, in uh, friends to Kings, donors to Kings, and so on, and all of their employers. So we actually have a fair reach and it's bigger than you think it's gonna be. Then you need to think about where your target audience lives online, because that's where you need to be. So my target audience is a business to business audience. I'm talking to CPAs and uh, they may be on Instagram, but unlikely, but they might be on Facebook groups. There are groups and these people have like concerns. And so they, they enter into these groups, not only to be part of something that is relevant to them, but also uh, in order to share information, because these communities are very gracious and they really want to help each other. And then LinkedIn, YouTube, very important for video. LinkedIn and Facebook is where I will live. So at any rate, keywords and hashtags are magnets. Think about them as magnets. This is how we consolidate and and cut through all the noise online to find just the stuff that's relevant. And so if you're not sure, I can't stand Twitter, quite frankly, because it's just like, it's there's so much noise on Twitter. But Twitter is very good for one thing. It's very good for finding the relevant hashtags and keywords. So it's actually a really, it's like a search term, you, a search platform, you should use Twitter the same way you would use Google. But what's interesting is on Twitter, it's going to show you all the people that are talking about COVID-19, COVID-19 vaccines, COVID-19, whatever it is, right? Um, so again, you find the people, the influencers that are talking about the hashtag that's relevant to you. And I would say, go to the second tier people. Don't go to the big names, you know, don't, don't go to um, you know, superstars, don't go to people, go to the people that have 2,000, 5,000 followers, maybe even 10,000 followers, because those are the ones that are trying to build their following and they're going to be much more gracious. And if they see that you're real, they will follow you back. So follow them first, first identify who they are through hash, relevant hashtags, follow them, and then read about some of the stuff they're doing. It's a tremendous compliment when you do that online and promote them and then let them know that you're promoting them. And they're gonna be, and they're gonna thank you. And then they're gonna realize you're not just another drone online, that you're a real person, that you care about certain things and you build real relationships. This actually happened to a woman who was reading from number phobic, like she was reading from a Bible. It was hilarious. And she's in front of a video and she's highlighting certain pull quotes and stuff. She has a following of 25,000 on Instagram. She's from Nigeria. I never even knew this woman existed. I found her through hashtags and she's now a, um, a collaborator with me. So at any rate, you'll have about a 40 to 50% follow back um, ratio. Create the content. This is going through those circles one by one. Write down the top 10 questions your customers always ask. Write them down. You have it in your head, write it down. Do a video, get in front of your camera and just talk about it. Don't worry about editing. You can always throw it over your shoulder, your MP4 file over your shoulder to a Fiverr editor for, you know, 20 bucks. Transcribe what your video is saying in a PDF format. And so it's downloadable, right? So underneath your video on YouTube, and it doesn't cost any money to do this, put the link to the PDF download so you can collect the name. That's how you build your list. Your, and if you want to do a blog post, 
Uh, it should be no longer than 400 words. You don't even have to do that. If you do the video, you do the, the PDF download, that's all you really need. But make sure that whether it is video content or written content, that you have visuals because people are very, very drawn to visuals, especially in a mobile format. You should be publishing at least once a week. Oh, no. Yeah, once a week. Consistency is what wins. So what are the metrics for success? How do you know you're getting traction? You should be looking at traffic growth of somewhere between five and 10% a month. If you're doing that, that is just pay dirt. <clears throat> and if you're not sure how, um, then you should have somebody who's between 18 and 22 in your ecosystem to help you do that. If your time on your site or on your video is anywhere from a minute and a half to greater, that's like an eternity online. So you would shoot for about a minute and a half. If somebody is engaged for a minute and a half on your online asset, that's a very big deal. Bounce rate has to do with um, how quickly they arrive and leave. So you want a bounce rate of 50% or less, and you'd be looking to build your list of 25,000. It takes time to do this. Even if you get three a day, five a day to sign up for what you're doing, that's a big deal. Always ask questions. Um, and again, this could become your, your content uh, calendar, but lead with questions, not with answers. Okay, and here is just some examples. If you're thinking about this, you know, here's what I've learned, or have you ever struggled with why? You've seen this all over online, right? And the reason why you've seen this so much is because it's so powerful. When you ask a question, whether or not somebody cares about what you're going to talk about, just the ambiguity, ambiguity of leaving that unanswered question in the air is like hanging there like stale cigarette smoke. They'll wait long enough just to hear your answer. Do you know that you don't have to suffer from X or Y, right? So use some of these questions to help engage your audience. So what's next step? Anytime you publish content, you need to let your audience know at least three times that it's there. And so don't tell them that it's there, but invite them, come and see. If you've ever wondered about this, then you really should watch this. It's two minutes of your time, manage their expectations, but engage your network with real questions and ask them, you know, is there something, has this been meaningful to you? Is there something else, other questions you'd like to have answered? Become the answer person. So again, the hashtags are very important. Twitter is great for, um, for a hashtag search, Facebook for groups, Instagram, use the stories, okay? Because the stories are evergreen, they don't go away. That's relatively new on Instagram. Um, look to see if your tribe lives, you know, the prospects that you're after live on Instagram. Instagram is actually quite powerful. Um, so see if it's relevant to you. If you're business to business, uh, LinkedIn also has LinkedIn Live. I'm just exploring that right now. It might be useful to help you build your network, but give your audience a reason to come back. So again, what you're gonna find if you go online, I know I'm running out of time, but I'm gonna go through this very quickly. LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, you need, uh, wherever you're gonna live, choose one social platform and find out when the best time is to promote what you're doing on that platform. So let's just take, uh, let's take Facebook groups, for example. Facebook is great after 8 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Don't ask me why, that's just the behavior on Facebook. On uh, LinkedIn, actually, it's in the middle of the day, which of course makes sense, during the lunch hour. That's when people are looking for new jobs, is in the middle of the day. So uh, at any rate, know when the best time is to, uh, is to promote. So um, our intro to marketing students get to cruising altitude within six weeks. They build their content. It's not a lot of time. You already have this in your head. It should be something you don't have to research, but make sure you build your network. So start now, okay? And don't worry that it's not perfect because perfection's not the goal. Do a market test. Just get comfortable with the technology. Get comfortable with the new world. Zoom, we're on Zoom right now, right? Zoom is like the platform for the world. The great thing about Zoom is once you learn it, you can, you can share your screen just like we're doing now. Uh, you can put up a single slide and speak to it um, and then have your PDF download. The great thing about Zoom is you can also record. So video is king, okay? And that's your lead magnet. 
Uh, make sure you have decent lighting. It doesn't even have to be great light lighting, but be willing to learn and get feedback from your, from your uh, constituency. So, and you have to be willing to adapt. You can also, by the way, interview people in your space. So that means you become a curator. So you don't have to be the font of all knowledge. All you have to do is find people who are trying to promote themselves and help promote them as well. So there's so much content you can do. For your home base, if you're gonna do a blog, Wix and WordPress are the industry standards for doing a blog. And a blog is nothing more than just a repository for written or video content. Uh, for promotion, I encourage you to start a YouTube channel. We've talked about some of the other things, but a YouTube channel is very powerful because YouTube right now is not a saturated market, believe it or not. And it skews more male than female, which is not true for Facebook and Instagram. That skews more female than male. So if you have more of a male audience, YouTube is, the, is a great place. And it's become like the go-to, right? I need to know how to make bread. Everybody goes to YouTube. I need to learn how to grow tomatoes. Everybody goes to YouTube. So at any rate, YouTube, very, very powerful. If you're going to live somewhere, that's probably the best place to go. So um, offer value in order to build your list. And it could be anything. It could be an ebook. It could be the PDF guide. It could be a step-by-step -step guide. It could be, you know, anything. But, but um, collect your visitors' names and emails. Uh, lead pages will help you do that. MailChimp will help you do that. And again, for not a whole lot of money, maybe a couple of hundred bucks, there's somebody out there on Fiverr that can help you set that up. So building your list is the key because every name you collect is worth between $10 and $100, depending on how engaged they are. So clean up your online assets. Would you do that for yourselves? Okay. Make sure that it's consistent. Build or update your social platforms. All of it is free. Find the platform that's relevant to you. And then as you do your search on that platform for collaborators, find 10 that are relevant in your ecosystem and follow them. And start telling the world what you're doing. This is not a time for humility. They need to know the heroics that you've done. They need to know your stories because that's the evidence that you're amazing. And you are. And commit to regular engagement. Consistency is key, not perfection, consistency. And always start with a question and always with the goal of building your list because the value of your business is in your list online and build your lead magnets. Um, at any rate, your online presence is not part of your business, it is your business. And so at any rate, uh, Pexels is a great website to think, pexels.com has all kinds of free, uh, free images. You can download those images. Uh, and just make it super easy for yourself in terms of video. Use your phone, stand in front of a window with good lighting, which frankly is what I'm doing right now. Um, at, at any rate, um, uh, and if you need any kind of video editing, you know, use Fiverr and find people on there that do video editing because they're very inexpensive and it's worth your time. You can build a partnership with some of these guys so that you have a go-to resource to get the job done. At any rate, we at the King's College want to bless you. We want to thank you for investing your time here. And uh, what I have committed to doing, I've told President Gibson this, is uh, if there is one person on this call that would like uh, for me to do an assessment of their online assets. I am happy to do that. And this is our gift to you uh, because we think it's that important. And with that assessment will come some top line recommendations uh, and you can choose to follow it or not. But this is really to be a blessing to you and help equip you in this transitionary phase to uh, what is really a new world. So if you'd like um, to follow me, I hope you do because I'm constantly talking about things that can help small businesses. On Twitter, I'm at dfotopoulos, LinkedIn, Dawn.Fotopoulos. Uh, Amazon is where you can find the book, Accounting for the Number Phobic. It's also on Audible. And we have, it's got a four, five star rating because we have saved 500 businesses that would have gone bankrupt just simply through the book. You can always contact me directly through email. And the protocol is the same for me and for all the professors at King's dfotopoulos at tkc.edu. And I want to hear from you. So if this was helpful, please provide some feedback. And if there's more you want to know, I need to know that as well, because I'm happy to do that. 
And, you know, thank you in a hundred different languages for joining us. I, I really appreciate the opportunity, Professor Gibson, of speaking to this constituency. Um, and, uh, and again, I'll take any questions. Okay, Don. Um, wow, that, that was just a tour de force. There's so, so much uh, in that, in that uh, 45 minutes or so of content that you've put out. Now, as the questions have been coming in, I've, I've been kind of sorting them and, and screening them and, uh, and putting them together in, in logical buckets, hopefully. Um, the good news is your presentation actually anticipated several of the questions. So there were questions along the lines of how do I choose which platform that I might want to use? Um, how do I how do I know which platform does what uh, uh, skill you know best in terms of uh, what I'm looking for, whether it's content uh, to be housed or if it's to build a network? And so you've addressed some of those things already. But um, one of the questions was related to um, maybe, how would you respond to somebody who's a little bit fearful about sharing their content? They, they say, you know, this is, this is my stuff. If I give it away, maybe I'm not going to see all the benefit. Um, and so they're a little bit nervous about stepping out uh, in that direction. Well, uh, okay. So everybody knows what the Manhattan Project was, right? The Manhattan Project was the development of the atomic bomb in World War II. It was very interesting the way the federal government managed that project. They had Oppenheimer and they had his group in uh, New Mexico. But what they did is they asked each of the scientists to solve an aspect of the problem. They didn't give them the full picture up front. So one of the things you do online, and you will see this, by the way, the first thing you need to do is go online as if you're a buyer of your own services and look at what your competitors are doing. Okay, go out as if you are your own customer and see what they're doing. So what I'd recommend is you manage your online presence the way they manage the Manhattan Project. You mm. solve a sliver of the problem. You solve part of the design. You always leave the detonator for the paid service. You never give away the detonator, okay? So you give enough to demonstrate your credibility. You give enough to talk about, so for example, if you're giving away recipes, you don't give away the secret ingredient until somebody pays you to do that. Um, you give away part of it, right? That, that's what you will see online. That's mm. what I would recommend. Nice, very nice. And you you touched on this uh, this next question uh, just a little bit, but let's go let's go a little bit deeper. And this is this is probably going to have to be our our last question. But at the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned forty six percent of small businesses don't have an online presence at all. Um, so there's some sort of inertia to overcome for a good portion of small businesses that are out there. So for those business owners who might be a little bit concerned about or feel overwhelmed by, or maybe a bit intimidated by the different platforms that are out there, how would you address uh, their motivation to just get started, to, to do something at this time? Okay, so think about the next step as a market test. Don't think about it as live or die, because when we think about it as live or die, the mountain becomes much, much higher than it actually is. And so what I would recommend you do is sit in front of your, your camera and talk about your life experiences. Talk about a story that's particularly important to you. Talk about something that changed your life in your business. Tell that story and just, play it for people in your in that are close to you who love you and who are um going to be honest with you and don't publish it yet just show it to them and say is this worth publishing is this worth sharing and do it two or three times until you feel a little comfortable sitting in front of a camera and just talking into the camera about what's important to you and then throw your fleece out there open up a YouTube channel. It's very easy to do if you have a Gmail account, most of us do, and put it up there. And then reach out to audiences that need, remember, it's not about you, 
right? It's really not about you. It's really about blessing people. It's about Isaiah 61, right? Because the Lord has anointed you to preach good news to the poor. So if you have good news, if you've solved problems, others need those answers. So remember, it's about them. And that's what I would suggest. Just do a test, a little test. Just stick your foot in the shallow end of the pool. And when you do it enough, it'll start to feel like second nature. All right. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you will agree that was an amazing blessing to have uh, so much content delivered in just maybe it's, it's a little bit of a fire hose perhaps, but with uh, all kinds of, of tips and tricks and pointers, all very personalized. And, and I love the notion of just telling your story, telling, telling each, of the, uh, uh, each of our own stories in a way that, that is, just offers to, to bless others. And hopefully that is in fact uh, what you received today. Uh, in particular, I'll just I'll point back to Don's offer of you know first come first serve for a, a review of your online assets uh, from Don's perspective with top line recommendations. Uh, reach out to her and because uh, I know she's very sincere in that, and I can't imagine what the the actual benefit and value of that offer is. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us uh, at the King's College today. Uh, this is what we're about. We're, we're about raising up students and we're about faculty that are making a difference in the real world. Uh, look for Dawn online, look for her book uh, on Amazon, and uh, just, uh, just be blessed um, and, and be optimistic about the future. Uh, God is going to get us through to the other side of this thing, uh, and we're looking forward to uh, what, what emerges on, uh, when we do. So thank you again for being with us. Uh, we appreciate you very much. Take care.